You gonna do it? Just do Is it. Time? I think you got it. All right. Ready? Set. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Weird Waves. We're on the stream tour, part two. We said our goodbyes to our new friends in the Rocky Mountains. And as we made our way down, the snow on our windshield turned into bugs. And we knew we were close to the land of a thousand microbrews, Bend, Oregon. This bridge, it used to be this um, spillway that was super gnarly. This is where people come on inner tubes through here and then float down through there and then this is still like blocked off up at the top so people don't like float down through here. No off way. That thing. I've never seen that. That's psycho. In the summertime this will get so busy that like just walking across you'll it's like frog you have to wait like for like five minutes for people because it'll just be like constant like flow of people coming through. Just to get across to get to the way. Yeah it's like wow. gnarly. If they yeah. like take you out of the leg you know you're like going down with them like <laughs> Oh, there's the Grom. Oh, there it goes. Woo! Sure, there are people here that have never surfed. This is like, this is surfing to them. They just surf, learn how to ride this wave and they, you know, that's what they do. And you don't have to be a surfer to do this. You don't have to be a snowboarder. You don't have to like skate. You don't have to do any of them. You can still like learn how to river surf. Meet Alex Lopez, pro snowboarder and son of Mr. Pipeline, Jerry Lopez. So when the city of Bend was thinking of adding surfing to their list of board sport recreation, Alex was all about it. The Whitewater Park was built primarily to help control water levels so that endangered species can thrive. It also has gates that regulate the flow of water making Ben surfable year round. But the most unusual fact is this Whitewater Park has a brain. Has a brain. Has a brain. Has a brain. It's the bat cave. <laughs> we got a white cat down there. Just sitting there. <laughs> Mr. Biggles. <push> buttons, yeah. <laughs> My official title through Ben Park and Rec is River Recreation Specialist, but everyone just refers to it as the Wave Shaper, because that's what you're doing. And uh, there's 26 gates throughout the park, and they control the flow volume um, throughout the park and how it's distributed. And then they also shape each of the four waves in the Whitewater Channel. And when I work with James with the other Wave Shaper, it's super helpful because we can actually be out testing the water and the other one can be shaping it and giving feedback. So uh, it's a pretty good two-man system to operate this piece. It's tough because you know everyone wants something different, especially when you get into kayaking and stuff. That gets real specific as to what people want. Yeah. So you just kind of got to do the best you can to make as many people happy as you can. You're always going to piss off someone, but. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so like these five right here are really critical in the surf wave. And say you want to open any one of them up like that, you just open it up. You can put air into it, you can take air out, you can stop it, you can have it hold a certain setting. So um, could you potentially wipe someone out oh, if yeah, they're on the sure. wave? For sure. <laughs> Dink! <laughs> You're gone. <laughs> Time's up. Boop, boop. See ya. In the van, man. Yeah, cool. <laughs> you can just pull in, maybe we'll in see this truck. Yeah, like um, in between the buildings over here. <sighs> Probably turn some lights on for you guys. You should see our collection of riverboards up there. Oh yeah? <laughs> All the ones that didn't work. 
spot. <laughs> Trial and error. Yeah, yeah, we can go check it out. This is where we love to go. Here, guys, there's no uh, handrails up there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right on. <laughs> these are a bunch of. These are like all of my dad's kind of first riverboards, I guess, right there. Oh no way. Alex was just like ten years old, mm -hmm. or maybe. So was that your your first river surfing experience? Yeah, I guess. Like so. Yeah. Boards and stuff. And uh, so this guy jumps in, and you know I'm I'm standing like this far away from him, watching him. I never rode a standing wave before. I go, let me try that thing. <laughs> and then, cool. You know, I go, I can't wait. I go home. I got a six o or something at home, and so I brought that back and we're riding it. Yeah, I I you make something better. So I went <laughs> back, you know, because we use UV. We can. I shaped it and then we glassed it and that afternoon we jammed out there, tried it, wow, this is way better. And it just evolved right. and this one was like the first one that was really good um, and it was only a twin fin, they were all twin fins out there. And then Alex cool. got into it, you know, and he's actually the one that um, has been shaping most of the boards for it because he's uh, kind of figured it out better than I have. <laughs> the wave and bend has a really tight transition. Basically any board over 5-6 and your nose will catch. It's also really shallow, so snapping fins out is a regular occurrence as well as your body bouncing off the gates. With paddling taken out of the equation, you don't need as much foam as you would in the ocean. I was riding a 5-2, 19.5 wide, 2.5 thick, Hayden shapes geared more towards a fishy ocean shape I thought might work. Alex was riding a self shape 4 7, 17 inches wide, 2 inches thick, asymmetrical outline. Your average surfer down at the wave all ride roughly that size. But no matter what shape or size you got lying around, if it floats, give it a go. Surf's going off in Canada. <laughs> surfing the land of a thousand microbrews with Mr. Pipeline and his son with people riding repurposed windsurf boards and a wave shaped by a wave wizard. It sounds like a crazy dream I would have, which kind of sums up our trip. We're surfing in yeah. Central Oregon, 200 miles from the ocean. <laughs> That's got to be cool. Oh, really cool. You know, just getting to surf it with all all the locals and uh, have you rock up and rip a couple was pretty uh, rad. You know, surfing's grown so much and then all of a sudden it got real popular and you know, now there's a lot of guys in the water, there's tension, there's all that. You know that more than I do. Yeah. But you come here 
and everybody, you know, you have to wait your turn. And everybody's kind of still grooving on it, you know. And yeah. Everybody's really encouraging and having a good time. It's kind of like surfing used to be. Everybody's going to get a turn, you know. Yeah. That's the great thing. Yeah, there's no it. urgency or, or jockeying for position, this which I love. Yeah. I love that Me aspect. Too. This may very well be the future of surfing. It's stuff like this. Whoa, how about those weird waves? Huh? <laughs> that was fun. Well, thanks for cruising along our journey. Uh, we went from Pipeline, Idaho, down to serving with Mr. Pipeline in Bend, Oregon. Wow, what a journey, huh? Well, again, thanks for coming along. Uh, you know, we saw more than... Congratulations. You've made it to the end of the video. Thirsty for more? What hell? We got plenty of links, you know. Lots of links. Tons of links. You want more links? We got them. Click the links. Here's the links. Click up.